Hey everyone! I'm Lily, and I figured we'd get into you getting into the swing of making videos with a classic Lily just rambles about a game for a little bit of time, for, you know, a video's length, whatever that is. Sometimes it's like 30 minutes, other times I look at the kill lock and it's like, been an hour! Who knows? Although you probably can because you can look at like how long the video is, but me, I'm ignorant. I don't know how long I'll be on blabbering about. Uh, but I thought today I would uh, talk about this little uh, indie game that I've been playing lately. Um, it's not very well known um, to a lot of people, um, but I thought, you know, I have some thoughts on it. Um, and that is, of course, uh, the new Pokemon game. Um, I only got around to playing it. I'm a few months late in actually getting picking it up, but uh, I recently just finished it. Um, and by finished it, I mean mostly finished it in the National Pokedex. I'm like only missing a few, a couple, a couple things that I'm just waiting for a friend to trade for them uh, from Scarlet. Then uh, I figured I'd give my thoughts on the game. Uh, just as a rule thing, I'm not going to be talking about it from like the competitive scene because I haven't done that since like Gen 4, so you're not going to hear a lot of anything talking about like, you know, the prevalence of Paradox Pokemon and like, you know, VGC and things like that. And, like, you're not going to hear that from me because I don't really, I'm not up to date on that. Uh, when I made teams for, I, I did EVC train some things, but it was just the meta builds for Terror Raids and nothing else. <laughs> um, I did not go out of my way to figure out fancy things or anything. Uh, but yeah, so let's just like dive into it. Unless I mean like, I played Violet, but this is really for Scarlet and Violet. There's not a significant difference between the two of them, like in the story or anything, that I think merits them having a, any separate points, because I'm not even going to be touching about the story much, because, I mean, at least the points that are different between the two for the story, but um, yeah, so. But let's just open with like the let's open with just the elephant in the room of the game of the fact that it's not a finished game. Uh, this is by far the least polished Pokemon game I think they've released, at least that I've played. Uh, there might have been a spin-off game that wasn't very good, uh, but it is you know it has many performance issues. It has I don't not so many bugs. I think most a lot of the like, major bugs were decently patched out, but it does have some major performance issues. Uh, the biggest for me is, um, I'll get in, actually I'll get into that a little bit, but um, things that were an issue there. But I mean, I have my sympathies for the actual developers of the game. I do not blame the developers at all. Like, Pokemon is in a um, weird situation from a lot of games that it can't be delayed. At least like the mainline games, they can't delay them. Um, if, like, they need more time because it's like, oh, it's taking longer, and I know there's a lot of different moving parts, but, like, Pokemon, like, there is a huge business around everything connected to the games, the card game, merge, the anime, all of this kind of relies on kind of the main series games releasing at a pace that everything else is, so they can't really, like, be like, hmm, we actually need, like, another year for this to come out, actually, like, finish optimizing the game, rank out the bugs, like, smell out some of the stuff, and so we're left with what we have. Um, and it is kind of sad because honestly I think the game has a lot of potential. Um, it's just uh, kind of annoying that it's like sort of like that, um, but I mean like, so at the end of the day, like, it's disappointing and I I don't I don't know enough about business and the larger ecosystem to be like, this is what they should have done differently. But I'm, I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, there needs to be more time between generations or and more time developing these things. Cause like the same studio put out Arceus just last year. Like, um, I mean, they even like, you know, moved out doing the Diamond and Pearl remakes to a third party studio. Uh, so it's like, but even though they, they had a whole like, not a mainline, but a whole game that did a bunch of different things just in the last year. So it's like, hmm, that's... The pace that they're making things at is kind of like, hmm, this is not sustainable. And I'm not going to get into it too much, but I just wanted to acknowledge that up front. That it's like, you know, this isn't a finished game and 
yeah, I don't think it's the developer's fault. Um, I don't even think it's like, you know, honestly, I honestly doubt how much of it is even anyone at Game Freak themselves, because I don't actually know how the whole thing about it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, I don't blame de developers, blame like the managers, but it's like, I think the managers are also probably beholden to a bunch of corporate things above them that like, no, it has to come out at a certain point. And for Gat Given, like, this was a game with a buggy release like Scarlet Violet was inevitable. Um, so here's to hoping that there will be some support performance updates when like we start getting like some DLC for it uh, in like, you know, a year or so. Um, I don't actually know when, how long until like the Sword and Shield DLC started coming out because I don't know, I hadn't. I picked up Sword and Shield very late into the gen. Um, I you know, both the DLCs were already out at that point and all that. But, uh, yeah. But let's just start going into my points and thoughts I've had while going into the game. First and foremost, one of my biggest things is... I think it was Gen 5 that they... No, Gen 6 that they did the, um... Actually, Way back up real quick. Um, just a quick summary of my experience with Pokemon. Um, I've been playing Pokemon since Gen 3. My first game was Emerald. I started playing a thing in fourth grade. Uh, and then I went back and I played, you know, Ruby, uh, um, Fire Red. And then I went on to play Pearl and Platinum. I was disappointed with Platinum. Um, I'm just talking about my mainline ones. Like, yeah, I played Mystery Dungeon and Ranger and some of the other ones. But, um, then I took a break for things. I skipped Gen 5. Uh, and then I came back for X. Um, and I've played most of the generations since then, most of the games since then. Um, I still need to finish Ultra Sun. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so that's what I've been. I like the collecting aspect. I maintain, well, maintain. Uh, it's not finished yet. It's like 90% complete. Um, a All Forms Living Dex, uh, so I currently have it on home. I have, I should do a video on it at some point, but you know, if it has a distinct form that can be stored in home, it's there. If it has a distinct gender difference form, it's there, like in a regional form, a special event form, I try to have them there. Um, so I went to this game with, that was probably my main thing, was like, you know, I want to get the stuff to update for home. The home update to allow you to move stuff is slated for the spring, so that'll be exciting. I'm, I have a checklist of everything going on and all that, so that'll be coming up. Uh, but actually, now we're talking about the game itself, is that, you know, I think it was Gen 6 that they changed, or maybe it might have been Gen 7, but they changed how TMs worked, uh, where you know, before TMs were one use and you also had HMs, but then they were like, you know, TMs, you get them, they're infinite use. This was one of the best change. It lets you play around with movesets much more freely. Getting a team was exciting, and rather than being like, well, I guess this is going to sit in my bag until I either need it or I don't, and I've moved on from this game and I never use it, because it's a consumable that many of which you can only get one of in the entire playthrough. And... That wasn't a great system, but then it wouldn't turn, to be, turn into a thing where it's like, you got the TM, it is now a permanent unlock, and you can use it to teach moves and have that move available to any Pokemon on your team that can learn it. And I thought that was a great change. And then the Diamond and Pearl game remakes came around, and uh, when they did uh, Ruby and Sapphire remakes, they ported that change forward where, like, you know, original Ruby Sapphire, it was the one used TMs, but no, they're back, now they're infinite in uh, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. But then in Diamond and Pearl, they were like, no, 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 TMs are back to single use. And it's like, okay, I mean, the Diamond and Pearl remakes, I didn't do a, I'm not gonna do a video on them. I was not impressed with them. They were kind of disappointing. They didn't add a lot. Uh, if you want to play Diamond and Pearl, just play Platinum. Just emulate Platinum. It's a better experience. Um, but that said, Ruby, Sapphire, um, but then they announced in year Gen 9, TMs are going back to single use. And this was the wrong move, in my opinion. The On the bright side in this game, you now get, when you ever you get a recipe, you unlock 
the, well, you unlock, whenever you obtain a TM for the first time, you unlock the recipe for the TM so you can make more of them later. And every single Pokemon Evolution line has its own resource it drops now. So you might get like, I don't know, Eevee fur or small of oil, and these can be used to make TMs at every Pokemon Center. Uh, the system, I like how it it was done. I like... Well, no, 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 I don't like how it was done. I, I appreciate the idea that it was, but it was all like a problem that wasn't there. Like, I think part of me thought was like, you know, it's a combination of things like we have this new auto battling thing, but we need a reason for you to do that because it doesn't give that much experience, but it's a way to grind these resources and you can use to get these te to make DMs and it just added a whole slew of new items to the game. A ton of bag space in the TM section and just made teams more annoying without actually adding anything of value to the game. Like, you could have just, like, the few th items that, act, like, Pokemon drop items that actually had uses outside of TMs, like Gimme Gold Coins, you could have just had those as normal items that you still collect and do those things and don't have this whole, like, just let me get a TM and use it. Like, the whole items and crafting system was great in Arceus because you actually made things that you needed. You didn't even make TMs in Arceus. Arceus TMs were infinite use, if I rem- Were there even TMs in Arceus? I don't think there were. I think- I think you just talked good to the lady to, to teach you. Regardless, though, like, the whole crafting system Arceus was great because it was kind of the style of, like, you know, the open world where you got to, you know, build your own Pokeballs and potions and things like that and, like, but- they're like, oh, people liked a crafting system. Let's have a crafting system in this one, because it's an open world game, and open world games have crafting systems, right? But but then it's like, I think I've made like two TMs the whole time, because it's, I don't know, it's, you have to go out of your way to do these things, and it's like, I don't know, it, it made me hesitant again to ever use my TMs, because yeah, I could build them, but it, it's still annoying to get, like, what if I need some hard to get one to make this TM, and it's just not a good system. I don't know why they changed it back, and, like, it, I wouldn't mind all the Pokemon having their own drops and whatnot necessarily, or this things if, A, there were fewer resources you had to deal with. Again, it is every single evolution line has its own resource, and it's just way too many. Like, either, at the very least, it should have been abstracted down of like, you know, you get like, you know, a rock type resource, which you can use to make rock type TMs. Like, okay, maybe Earthquake costs the most, and then like lesser ones like cost like, you know, less than that. I guess Earthquake's a ground type, so you'd use any ground type stuff to make that, but you get my idea where it's like, it shouldn't have been as complex with this many different resources. And let us build more than just TMs. Just let us do, you know, any sort of thing, you could have had some resources that, like, had... I don't know where I'm going with this, but it was trying to pull this crafting system that... But it just didn't capture the same niche as it did in Arceus. And it was being bad and reverting one of the best changes I think they've done in, like, modern Pokemon. Um, which is the switch to TMs being there. And, like, yeah, if you wanted some limited-use TMs, you already invented TRs in Gen 8. Like... This wasn't a problem that needed to be solved, and I don't know. I'm, I'm just annoyed by it. It's, it's just frustrating that like you know I I experimented a lot less of my Pokemon. I was like, okay, oh, hey, nope, I got my team. I have the sets on my moves. Uh, I went with uh, Fuegoco as my starter because he's an adorable apple crocodile, uh, and. I went with him, a Gardevoir, because of course I go with Gardevoir, because I love Gardevoir, Gardevoir is my favorite Pokemon, and I hate what the internet has done to Gardevoir. Um, I did not mean to dress in a Gardevoir color scheme for this, but um, I don't know, I like green and white. I don't know what to say. Uh, but, and then a Claude Sire, because it looks like a donut, and I love Claude Sire. It's so cute. Uh, also, Ground Poison has pretty good coverage, and it has decent bulk, uh, but yeah. Um, the auto-paddling system is just, like, it's cool. It's 
interesting, I guess. I like the battling in world that they brought from Arceus. That's like, you know, there's, you know, not a battle screen scene. But it, it's fine. The auto battling is, is neat, but it's on, ultimately unnecessary. Uh, yeah, I mean, not every feature in a Pokemon game has to be like, you know, this has a distinct purpose in the game. Some of them are just fun that well, kids will have fun with, and that's fine, because at the end of the day, it is a kid, it is a kid's game at the end of the day. It just, the team change also just isn't good for kids in that regard. Like, you know, let, I don't know, stop baking FOMO into these games and whatnot. I don't know. Uh... Like on my list of things. I've come to this guy's turn, like, I don't know, from these rambles, like, I, I'll put together, like, a list of things when I'm actually being smart about it and I'm talking to you. But I'm really like, I don't know, should I have, like, like, a PowerPoint I have with this I, like, go through? I don't know. I've been considering. I might play with that. Um, just to have, like, a little bit of, like, visual stuff. Uh, but not, like, edited because that would require editing, but, like, how I did the old, um, like, hard reviews where I just had, like, bake it into my OBS layout. <laughs> so I would just go, like, boop and not have to do any sort of editing besides basic cutting things together. Uh, but yeah, but next up is just the major bugs that I found the most distracting. For the most part, like, some of the frame rate stuff, like, oh, look, okay, you know, the some, not, like, you know, animation frames of, like, people in the background having, like, a whole, like, you know, a frame every two seconds. It's kind of funny. It's charming in a way. And I understand you gotta optimize the game somehow, because I'd rather have that than just the frame rate of the game being bad. And overall, the frame rate of the game is honestly fine. Um, yeah, I think there's, you know, it, it just needed time, more time to be optimized, because it's not like the Switch can't handle a big open world game, because you know, it's done that with Breath of the Wild and other things, but... I already talked about all that, but that didn't bother as much. There's two big things. One, the lag in the boxes. Why is there so much lag in the boxes? Like, going through here, it takes, like, a good five seconds to even, like, have Pokemon show up. I'm, not, I'm talking about, like, the, like, past gens had that, too. There was, like, a slight delay, but not this bad. Uh, like, and even then, in the past ones, it would have a placeholder when it's, like, you slopped in a box. Oh, if the box is full, it'll have, like, a general, like, grayed-out Pokeball before the sprite loads and it loads them all in. This one is decent amount of that. You don't even know if the box is full or not until it's, like, past, waited a few seconds to everything to start slowly loading in. And I'm like, what is causing that? Like, I'm legitimately curious about when the background, like, what is causing so much lag in loading, like, you know, at most, like, you know, 32 by 32 sprites? Like, what? what is causing this amount of, like, thing? Like, you're, you're grabbing an array of Pokemon from a list and just grabbing their sprite. Like, what? I know that's an oversimplification of, like, the amount of systems that goes into these, like, large AAA games, but... How, how does that happen? <laughs> uh, and that's really kind of annoying. And then also, there's a lot of lag and desync stuff in Terror Raids, which make it hard to do anything precise sometimes. Which is fine because the terror raids are usually very hard. Like if you're you have a if your team that you've set up with is pretty decently. But like, I don't know. I like the asynchronous nature of the terror raids. I think that's a neat kind of thing for this specifically. Uh, I mean I wouldn't want it in sort of something that were like, you know, kind of more strategy and precision is needed in like uh what's it called? Uh, like how we had Dynamax adventures, um, but like, you know, this is a tricky thing I would have loved for Dynamax battle, uh, Dynamax raids and Sword and Shield, uh, but it does lead to some async stuff that is a little annoying and eh, I don't know what it is. Uh, that said, I will say the ease of making competitive Pokemon, like when I went to like EV train my like meta Iron Hands Azumarill and uh, support Chansey for terror raid battles. Um, I completely just net decked those. Um, or net decked isn't the right term. Like, you get what I mean. Um, net dexed. I might be onto something there. Ignore me, I am sleep deprived. Um, but, uh, it was actually not bad. It wasn't bad at all to get a full team of, to get them all EV trained, 
getting getting them hyper trained was a breeze. Uh, yeah, honestly, no complaints there. And the fact that you can just go to a store and get just buy most of the competitive items with money is so nice and so convenient. All of like the rant, the whole like you know, the EV training items you can just buy for ten k each. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, yeah, no, that was cool. Uh, and like, honestly, that said, like, if not for the technical stuff, like with the boxes and things like that, this would be a pretty good like home generation of like, okay, I'm going to work out this to do a bunch of things. But like that said, I don't think I'm going to be moving out of Sword and Shield. If I can, if I can train a Pokemon Sword and Shield, I'm going to be sticking to training it in Sword and Shield. Just, and also just for, you know, managing Pokemon that aren't in uh, Scarlet and Violet. Because, like, until some of those performance things are supported, especially in the boxes, it is just too sluggish and annoying to deal with, uh, deal with that. But, which makes me sad, because, like, a lot of things makes it a lot easier. I actually, you know, I, I was a bit hesitant to be like, hmm, I don't know if I like the new egg system I like having the daycare, but, like, I actually know the ability to just get a ton of eggs at once by just eating, like, a Thai egg power sandwich and just, like, AFKing for five minutes and then I can like get half a box full of eggs in one swoop and then hatch them at my leisure. That's fantastic. Love that. Fantastic thing. Nothing though, I don't know if there, you can see it, but I would love to see somewhere any sort of UI to tell me how much longer I have on my sandwich buffs because otherwise it's like I'm like I'll you have to note the time because, like, okay, I have like thirty minutes of egg power. I'll need to get it, and you know, at three thirty, I'll need to get more. But pl please, just give me a counter somewhere, like you know, when I open the menu, being like, show me like a little buff bar of like what my sandwiches have, and yeah. Now to the other big thing is, it's nature as an open world game. I don't like it. I like experimenting with things, but yeah. the Warp Paldea feels empty. There's a lot of cool locations and lots of places you go, but honestly, you just none of it is super memorable. And part of that's due to just like I don't know. Everything's the same, and like you know the power of like you know i got my maridon with fully upgraded i was like i focused on the getting all of the herba mystica so i can get the all the movement abilities so it could kind of like that led me to be able to kind of just like ignore most of the train because i can just climb up everything and things like that but even without that even when i was like oh i found these caverns and things like that it's like the, but they're okay they're fine they don't have the same impact as many of the other regions um uh, i Honestly, as much as I didn't like the Sword and Shield routes, just because I didn't feel like the routes were a bit simplistic and I felt like they could have had a bit more uh, complexity to them. The actual, like, you know, routes where it's like, you know, a fixed POV and you're moving about and things like that. The traditional Pokemon route. And then you have the wild areas that you had more, that felt more like how Paldea was. I felt like that was a nice balance. And if we're going to full open world for all f for future generations, I will not be happy with that change. I want more of the traditional route system with some areas that have like this open world stuff for when you want some of those elements. And I feel like Sword and Shield did a good balance of that, even if I didn't like their implementation fully. But at the end of the day, there just wasn't a lot to do out there. Like, besides like there being like, oh, there's different Pokemon in this area, like, th th there's no reason to go there besides catching Pokemon. And I I don't know, they're like give, give us something sort of like, you know, any sort of quests like you have in uh, you know, in in Arceus. Like you know, there were some locations you went to that when you went there it's like oh it unlocks a fly place, but like Maybe have some wet thing that you have to do to actually unlock it as a fast travel location. That like exploration means something. Where I mean, even a pop up being like, "Hey, you found this location. 
you can fly to here, you know, it's not a Pokestop anymore, like right now, to give some sense of, you know, accomplishment that you've explored and found this area. And overall, you know, it for an open world game, it did not feel rewarding to do exploration. Um, like, yeah, there were, you know, the collectibles of like finding all the stakes to get all like the relic Pokemon and the relic legendaries and all that and finding all the gimme ghouls and to get your stack of gimme ghoul coins, but Paldea just feels empty. Uh, which is weird considering when you go in, like on the reverse side of like where it seemed like when you look at like, you know, the school and the amount of things you can do at the school with all the classes and like how well designed those zones are. It's just, there's so much content there, but that's not where I want to spend my time in a Pokemon game. I want to spend it in the wilds, like exploring and doing things and like doing Pokemon stuff, not sitting through cutscenes in classes and taking midterms. <laughs> Um, like, I feel like this, going back to the school regularly should have been more of a consistent thing in the story. And the thing comes to the other thing with the uh, uh, pacing is the pacing was weird because you could do all the gems in any order and this was a big thing. And honestly, for the Pokemon game, I felt like that was a bad thing. Like, the the story was really solid despite the fact that the pacing was so weird. Uh, for like the first kind of segment where you're doing all the gyms and the dealing of Team Star that like and then you were just like oh yeah then all three storylines converged and you had the big story which is very good and I'm not gonna get into it with because I don't have a lot to say about the stuff that you do in the Great Creator but it was solid it was good I enjoyed it uh, but that said I don't know it, it was just kind of like meh it was kind of there it wasn't that exciting. I, I don't know. The pacing, any sort of game where you can pace yourself to that extent is, it's just gonna feel off in its pacing, and I didn't like that. And I don't know. I don't have much to say there. It's just like I don't like how open-ended it was. I feel like open world is not the direction to take mainline Pokemon games. Uh, but yeah, no, the, the story needed more structure. If nothing else, it could have been like, you know, there is an order for the gems you go through or the an order for like, you know, the, you know, great creatures of Palea, but you have, you know, there is a certain amount of like, you know, roadblocks more than just like you physically can't get there because you haven't upgraded Maridon enough or things like that. I don't know. The other thing is like, why, like, to fill the world, there is such a massive Pokedex for this generation. Like, I don't know, I, d I don't remember what Sword and Shield had at launch, but like this one does 400 Pokemon, and like that's weird. That's weirdly large in my opinion. I don't know. I think they could have gone away with 300, but I don't know. It it felt like it was like, oh look, we have a massive Pokedex rather than like, you know, having interesting things to do in the world. And like, I... I am not one of the people who's upset where, like, you know, Gen 8 and 9 now, like, oh, you can't have all the Pokemon in the game, like, how dare you make me not, let me not have my, I don't know, Plank Pokemon in this generation. Like, I think it's fine. I don't mind, like, Pokemon, like, rotating in a way of, like, you know, this is what's in Gen 9 at this point. Like, you know, this is what you play with Gen 9. And when it's not there, you can store things in home and bring them out later. And that's fine. Like, I don't have a problem with that, but like, I don't know. It's... Eh, it just felt like an, a needlessly large and complex, like, deep Pokedex that like, it just like, it got to the point where it's like, why, why are there so many in the Paldea Pokedex? Uh, also, I know that like, the Paradox Pokemon can be considered to be like, forms of Pokemon, but like, is it just me or is it weird that there were only two Paldea form Pokemon? Like, after, like, yeah, we got, like, a good, like, dozen each or more of both Galar and, uh, like, a Galar and, uh, do, 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 Alolan, and, you know, a decent number of Hisuian, and then just, like, two, Wooper and Taros. I don't know, that just felt weird to me. Um, uh, 
but I mean like overall I enjoyed the game like despite all my complaining like I felt like it was an enjoyable experience it was an enjoyable game I, I liked the story especially once you you know beat the champion I liked how it was like you it wasn't like oh you beat the elite four champion credits roll like sword and shield did but then like the story was only barely finished at that point uh, like there was still like you know a good third of the story left to go after after that in the post game, but, like you know like going out into the great career of Paldea and like like all that was really good and really well done, and I enjoyed the game. It's just it is definitely just not one of my favorite generations by a long shot. I you know I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl not as much as Arceus. Arceus was much better in my opinion. Uh, I mean, the new Pokemon, I like them. I, I think like the stuff they added is neat. I think uh, I do really like Iron Valiant. I, I mean like I like Gardevoir and I like Gallade and like Iron Valiant as a new kind of my state go-to like I need to catch a Pokemon because it can learn False Swipe and uh, Thunder Wave and Hypnosis, but I've switched to more liking Thunderwave over Hypnosis for catching Pokemon, which is all things that Gallade had, but with much better stats now, which, I mean, it's a little bit fragile, but not as fragile as Gallade was, so I'm, I'm actually, I really like how, uh, I really like Iron Valiant. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I have no really point I'm going up to. I just feel like, you know, open world, like my big things is open world. I, don't, I think I like that they were playing around with the formula. I think Pokemon shines in the mainline games when they try out new things and change things up and like the game needs that. Uh, but I don't feel like open world, like pure open world, is a good fit for a mainline Pokemon game. Like, I think it would have worked better for a game just kind of like Arceus where it's, you know, there needs to be more reasons to go out in the world and see Pokemon and see them doing things. Like a Arceus style Pokedex where you like, you know, it's not just finding them once that is like catching them once and you get that out. Would have added so much depth to the game and any amount of like, you know, side quests to the areas to flesh them out. Um, also, was it just, is it just me or is it weird that like you have to fight so few trainers in this game? Like you just don't fight that many trainers. Like, it made sense in Arceus because it's like, these areas aren't settled. These are purely wild regions. But like, you have to go out your way to talk to them and there's some incentive to like fight all the trainers in an area because then you can talk to a guy and he'll give you an item. But I don't know. Can these planes stop flying overhead? That would be really nice. They're very loud. Um, I hope they're not picking up on the mic too much. But, uh, But the open world just made the whole place feel kind of samey and bland and to me. Like it was pretty, like there was lots of really neat areas when the lighting wasn't glitching out like in the Great Crater of Paldea, but I don't know, it, it just ended up feeling just kind of empty, uh, which is which is kind of sad and honestly kind of like one of the major pitfalls of the open world genre in general. But. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I enjoyed it, but it is by far not my favorite, and I don't think it's going to be a Pokemon game I spend a ton of time in. Although, I mean, there's always the possibility that DLCs might change that because the I was very medium on Sword and Shield until I put, went through the DLCs, and I was like, actually, no, this is very. I really enjoy this, so it might change my my opinion on that. But yeah. So, I mean, for that, also terrestrialization is dumb. Like, I don't like it. Like, it's, as a gimmick, it's fine. Just bring back Mega Evolution. Just, just, just bring it back. Like, Gigantamaxing was okay. Like, like uh, Dynamaxing was okay because it had Dynama Dynamaxing along with it, which was essentially Mega Evolutions, but just bring back Mega Evolution. It was, I get that ter ter like the terrestrializing has a really neat, play in like competitive but like and all that but it just doesn't capture me and the crystal look it just looks silly <laughs> but uh yeah I don't know I don't know what to say it's just like it's not my thing 
it's still better than Zed moves in my opinion, but what do you do? Oh. Well. It turns out it's about a half hour ramble anyway. It turns out what is wrong with my hair there? Stop curling weird. Uh <laughs> Well, thank you for listening and yeah, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts? You should engage with my content because it helps, I don't know. You do recommend my stuff. I, 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 I don't know. Uh, but yeah, no. I enjoyed it. It was a Pokemon game. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, would people be interested in more of like these kind of like just like, you know, talking about video game or like doing like kind of like video game review rambles? Because I don't know. I, I'm still going to be making some magic stuff, but like, a lot of myself is magic and D&D, and I haven't been doing a lot of magic and D&D lately in terms of, like, game stuff. So I need to figure out, like, okay, what are things I can do rambles about? <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, that's all I have to say. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or whatever time you're watching this. And as always, may your story smile upon you. <laughs>